Good morning, friends. Welcome to another episode of BioNews. Today we'll be discussing four papers, beginning with a paper by Wu et al. In this paper, uh, studying young males, they found that acute, a singular acute increase in testosterone levels uh, could change brain network connectivity, increasing selfish behavior. In a paper by Zhang et al., on a, um, it's a retrospective study, on, which means a historical study, not with new data, on a cohort of German hypogonadal men, meaning German men that had a disease in which they don't produce much testosterone. So in this study, what they found was that recent declines in testosterone um, uh, were predictive of cardiovascular events in the near term not just declines in general of testosterone levels. So for those that don't know, having lower testosterone later in life is associated with disease. And that's why a lot of people mistakenly say, hey, if you have low testosterone, you should take TRT. It doesn't necessarily mean that if you have low testosterone, you take TRT, you solve the problem. Because low testosterone is indicative of something being wrong with your body, right? But here what they're showing is that not just low testosterone is indicative, but recent declines in testosterone is particularly indicative of future term cardiac or near term cardiac events in a third paper by Amarat et al this is a fascinating paper you know there's a lot of talk about uh, marijuana and cancer and I've heard about this from people and the first few times I heard about this I really thought that this was the most insane delusional conspiracy theory basically I was told by people that there was one strain of marijuana that cured cancers which I found you know ludicrous obviously but uh, it turns out, actually, uh, this paper shows that, so this in, in vitro study, not in vivo, which means it's on cells individually, uh, specifically the cells are estrogen receptor positive human breast cancer cells that overexpress aromatase. What they found was they studied these cells' reaction to CBD, to THC, and to one of the most well-known endogenous cab cannabinoids in our body called anandamide. By the way, polymorphisms in the anandamide gene can make some people invulnerable to pain and fear. Anyway, back to the important point. So they found that uh, anandamide and THC cause cell death in the cancer cells, while uh, CBD caused autophagy in the cells. By the way, autophagy in some cancers is good and in some cancers is bad. So it depends on the cancer. I don't know about breast cancers. All three cannabinoids reduced aromatase expression which was the opposite of what I thought. From all my experience using marijuana in my life, I thought it increased estro estrogenic effects. And it, it seems to actually reduce aromatase expression, at least in these cancer cells. And the interesting thing is, it also upregulates, uh, so it downregulates estrogen receptor alpha. There are two kinds of estrogen receptors, by the way, alpha and beta. It downregulates the alpha ones, which are more relevant. Alpha are the main estrogen receptors. And upregulates the beta ones. So it differentially changes the expression of estrogen receptors. So this is a really interesting um, subject, you know. I really want to study more the effects of cannabinoids on our, on our uh, uh, steroidal systems. Anyway, the final paper for today by Na et al., which I'm very curious the origin of the name, if anybody knows, maybe it's Vietnamese or Cambodian or something, but you guys let me know. It's a study on transgenic mice. Uh, they were studying these mice that have autoimmune conditions that the autoimmune condition, which could be like Crohn's disease, arthritis, whatever, causes over time what's called demyelination or demyelinization. There's two ways to say it. I was, <laughs> there was a previous episode where I tried to pronounce demyelinization like 10 times. Then I realized you can say demyelination, which is, <laughs> anyway, so the point is, uh, so some of these autoimmune uh, diseases will cause demyelination. What is demyelination? Myelin is a lipid-rich sheath that covers what are called axons in your brain. A disease where you produce too little myelin is ALS, what Stephen Hawking's had. Over time, autoimmune conditions cause neurodegeneration in your brain. And they do this oftentimes by having the um, soldiers of your body's host defense system, the inflammatory cytokines, get through the blood-brain barrier, enter the brain, and cause havoc there. What they found in this study was that giving rodents a high-sodium uh, high, uh, diet actually protected them from damage to their from demyelination due to autoimmune diseases. And the reason the high sodium diet did this was because the high sodium diet upregulated the rodent's um, concentration of corticosterone. Corticosterone is the rodent's version of cortisol, a glucocorticoid, a stress hormone. Uh, 
When the uh, corticosterone, their cortisol, upregulated, their aldosterone downregulated, and the aldosterone synthase, which converts uh, corticosterone to aldosterone, also downregulated. That caused a, an improvement in the blood-brain barrier of the rodents. So this is an interesting uh, outcome. It shows that, uh, in fact, a high salt, a salt diet may protect your brain in some ways that we didn't know about. Now, of course, there's another danger of the high salt diet, which can cause local hypoxia in the brain, which could probably be in the whole more dangerous than this could be productive. But if it was still interesting nonetheless. Anyway, guys, I hope you have a great day, and I'll see you soon with, with another episode of BioNews.